सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट केयरफुली इन दिस एपिसोड ऑफ पोलिटिकली करेक्ट आई वुड लाइक टू टॉक अबाउट सर्टन थिंग्स कंसर्निंग द बीजेपी नेशनल एग्जीक्यूटिव मीटिंग इन डेली लास्ट वीक they might not have been reported because they did not seem significant enough but they give us an indication of how the ruling party is worried about its core support base among hindutva driven voters while trying to reach out to certain sections of minorities let me start with some interesting trivia some bjp leaders felt a tad embarrassed as they reached the ndmc convention center in the national capital for the national executive meeting they were all big leaders and that's how they made the cut to attend the meeting of the party's top decision making body but when these 300 odd who's who of the bjp arrived at the venue in the national capital they were asked to leave their mobile phones outside that was because the bjp high command did not want anyone to record the proceedings they might be big leaders in their own right but evidently they were not trustworthy enough to carry mobile phones in their own party meetings apparently as some bjp leaders tell us some delegates at the national executive meeting in hyderabad last year had recorded a bit of prime minister narendra modi's speech in hyderabad and made it public the bjp high command was quite upset about it and so decided to ban mobile phones in the executive meeting in delhi trivia aside let me now come to the main point after the national executive meeting was over the delegates were happy to tell whoever cared to listen how pm modi asked them to reach out to muslim groups of pasmandas and bohras as well as muslim professionals and elites he had also asked them to attend uh, church programs and uh, organize sufi music nights these delegates thought it was a good message to spread given the pm's sabka saath sabka vikas slogan and the fact that he had advocated out to reach to pasmandas at the hyderabad executive conclave too the softening stance towards minorities seemed to make sense when christian uh, majority nagaland and meghalaya are set to go to polls and so these delegates uh, came out and told the media about how the pm wanted them to reach out to the minorities they were mistaken obviously when tv channels and uh, websites started breaking news about how the pm wanted his party colleagues to reach out to sections of muslims the ruling party's media minders got urgent instructions from their bosses and the instruction was that what the pm said about pasmandaj bohras and church programs should not make headlines therefore till late into that night these media minders in the bjp were making desperate calls to journalists a cross platforms in tv channels newspapers and agencies asking them not to report that news maharashtra deputy cm devan fadnavis sought to play it down saying that the pm spoke about marginalized communities in general without taking specific names but modi's message was too categorical for the 300 odd participants to miss the cat was out of the bag for once bjp's media managers had a very limited success most tv channels websites and newspapers ran with their story about the pm's outreach to muslims you must have read them and heard them so what happened why would the bjp not want the media to publish what the prime minister himself said it goes without saying that the bjp's media minders never act without instructions from the top and nobody in the bjp would dare try to stop the publication of any portion of the pm's speech unless he himself doesn't want it to be published so the question in everybody's mind was did the pm talk about muslims by mistake and wanted blacked out later well it's highly unlikely modi had spoken about pasmandaj at the hyderabad executive meeting also and that was in july last year it made headlines in the media for weeks and months the bjp never had any problems with it then pm modi was building on 
in Delhi what he had floated in Hyderabad. UP Deputy CM Keshav Prasad Maurya, in fact, was so inspired by the PM's speech in Hyderabad that he went back to Lucknow and promised to serve Pasmanda Muslims as their watchman. Many other leaders went to town about the party's outreach to Pasmandas after the Hyderabad meeting. So it was quite a strange when the BJP sought to suppress the news about the PM talking about Pasmandas and Boharaj at the Delhi executive. In 2017, shortly after the UP assembly elections were over and results were out, I was sitting with a senior BJP functionary, a former party president in fact, at his Delhi residence. I asked, your party leaders say that the BJP might not have fielded a single Muslim candidate in this election, but a section of Muslims voted for you. Is that really true? He smiled and said, well, that's what we have to say. But they never voted for us, never will. Then he added, we will have to bring a Muslim minister nonetheless. We will have to bring him through the legislative council route. Of course, the same thing happened later. Mohsin Raja was brought into the Aritanath government as a minister. Incidentally, after the 2022 election, he was replaced by a Pasmanda Muslim, Denis Raja Ansari. Mohsin Raja was a, you know, a forward class Muslim and Denis Raja Ansari is a Pasmanda Muslim. That's the change you notice then. Prime Minister's remark about Pasmanda Muslims in Hyderabad uh, indicated a change in approach. It was driven by internal assessments in the BJP that a section of Muslims, howsoever minuscule, were inclined towards the party thanks to the government's welfare programs. Of course, hardcore Hindutva philosophy aside, Modi's or Yogi's welfare and development programs, be it free ration during COVID or construction of roads or houses or financial support to farmers, help all communities across religions. There is no discrimination as such. But let's not digress here. Coming to the PM's advice to party leaders to reach out to Pasmandas and other minority groups, the fact is that the BJP hasn't been able to make much headway in the past six months, even though it fielded four Pasmanda Muslims in the Delhi municipal elections. You know, former Rasabha MP Ali Anwar Ansari of the All India Muslim Pasmanda Mahaj told my colleague Avantika Ghosh last week, that when the PM spoke in Hyderabad, it was a pleasant surprise. The MP had written to the Prime Minister saying that you have to put an end to mob lynchings, bulldozers and operation in the name of love jihad to make people believe you. That was the MP's letter to the Prime Minister. Then he uh, told my colleague, okay, after that and then right ahead of the Gujarat elections, they released Bilkis Banu's rapists. Bilkis Banu is a Pasmanda Muslim. How can people trust them? I mean, how can people trust the BJP then? Ali Anwar Ansari told my colleague. Anyway, in Hyderabad, the PM had also asked the party to organize visits of uh, Christian delegations from the Northeast to Kerala to highlight what the party is doing there in the interest of Christians. Modi built up on that too in his Delhi National Executive speech when he asked leaders to attend the church programs. So why was it that PM Modi was asking his colleagues to reach out to Muslims and Christians? BJP leaders would have us believe that it's because he sincerely believes that his welfare schemes have benefited marginalized sections of minorities and the BJP has a good chance of winning them over. And it also helps build a statesman image, you know, at home and abroad. Then why not go to town with this outreach plan? Why deploy media min minders to try to ensure that the people don't know about it? Again, what BJP leaders would have us believe is that the party leadership sincerely believes that the party's core vote bank may not like this outreach to Muslims. You may be wondering about the perils of following seemingly paradoxical political strategies and messages. You want to reach out to the Muslims and then you don't want this message to go out. Well, when it comes to Modi, there are no paradoxes in voters' minds. Look at how the party built on its promise for an amended citizenship law in different contexts in different states to get the same results. That's election electoral victories. In 2016 assembly election in Assam, the BJP successfully sold it as a measure to drive out illegal immigrants from Bangladesh. And in Tripura assembly election two years later in 2018, the BJP promised the same amended citizenship law to give citizenship to uh, immigrants coming from Bangladesh. And the party finally managed to dislodge the 25-year-old 
left-led government there. Well, you know the BJP. There were no paradoxes here. In Assam, it worked because legal immigrants were Muslims. In Tripura, it worked because they were Bengali Hindus. In the immediate context of the BJP not wanting much focus on what PM said about Muslims in the National Executive Meeting, it seems the party is doing a rethink about its electoral strategy since the July 2022 uh, Hyderabad meet. Just as the RSS also seems to be doing a rethink about its own strategy. You know, Mohan Bhagwat was talking about the DNA of the Hindus and the Muslims being the same. Until last June, he was telling people not to look for a shivling in every mosque. He turned around a fortnight ago to ask Muslims to abandon the what he called boisterous rhetoric of supremacy and said how the Hindu society has been at war for a thousand years. Similarly, the BJP no longer wants publicity about its outreach to sections of minorities. That's probably because the Sangh and the BJP don't want any confusion in the minds of their core support base by showing a bleeding heart for minorities. Essentially, uh, what, while we may see paradoxes in what the PM said at the executive meeting and what the BJP media minders did later, the BJP seems to be absolutely clear about what it wants and how to achieve it. If we find the BJP confused, the joke is actually on us. That's all from me in this episode of Politically Correct. Thanks for watching.